Hello everyone, what is up? I am Ren Diesel. Brain Cell, you are learning crap today. No, I mean, this is useful. Um, uh, I really should have thought that name through. Anyway, welcome to the first video on the complex topic of I don't want to write on the other piece of paper, so I'm going to move that over to the side in a sec. Okay. Of you may if if you're an older student you may have seen this before calculus this it's a very hard topic and if you haven't already watched my video on slopes I would suggest you do that today um, <clears throat> first I wanna introduce to you first the idea of a limit or limb, as mathematicians write. And then, uh, I, want you, I want to introduce to, the, to you the idea of, uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to do this all in one video, but I also want to introduce the idea of a derivative, like this, that's how you write it. And later, this, that means an integral. But first, First things first, what do, what do all these things have to do with each other? Well, I also want to introduce the, this idea. This is epsilon. It's a Greek letter, and it's usually it usually means infinitesimal. And what does that mean? Okay, well, let's... Here, let me give you an example. An infinitesimal. Okay, so let's say I have a circle. That's actually a pretty half decent circle, so I'm happy about that. Here's my center. How do I find the area? Well, I'm going to use a controversial topic, or a controversial method, sorry. Normally, people use the famous formula pi r squared. But I'm teaching you calculus, not geometry. So here's what I would do I might cut it up to a bunch of different rectangles. Sorry, triangles. Wow, I really need geometry. But these aren't really triangles, they're wedges. So I'm going to have to... All that shaded part cut off. That way, now they're more or less perfect triangles. Not perfect triangles, but, you know, triangles. But that doesn't get me any closer to finding the area. So what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to draw a nice arrow. And now I'm going to take all these triangles and reassemble them into a bigger triangle. So, uh, that. And there you have it. You have this nice tri big triangle. Well, I might not have drawn it perfectly to scale, but uh, you get the idea. But here's, there's a problem. Remember all those little pieces here I cut off? They aren't in this triangle, so I'm, I'm missing some of the area. And, well, here's where the idea of an infinitesimal comes in. Let's say the infinitesimal, it's basically an infinitely small decimal. So let's say we have zero. Gee, such a hard topic. Well, now let's say the infinitesimal, we're going to write epsilon, is bigger than zero, but it's smaller than every other real number. And we're, let's, every other number, we'll write n. Say it's smaller than n for all n. For all n. Ugh. And that's pretty hard for some people to grasp. Because we'll, let's say I give you two numbers, a and b. Say a is smaller than b. You can always say, well, there's a number in, in between. You could take a plus b over 2, or just a plus b minus something, or whatever. There's always some some there are, there's always something you could fit in here, like C. But now you have this thing, this infinitesimal, and it's a very controversial thing in calculus. Though uh, they eventually got rid of it and replaced it with your limit, and the limit just says you. It's basically the limit. Let's say as x approaches some value n. So they say, as it approaches, but approaches just means it gets closer and closer and closer. So the distance is like so small off. The infinitesimal, though, 
says, well, I'm a, I'm a really, really, really infinitely small distance. And what exactly are you going to do with me? Are you going to throw me away? No, then you're throwing away some area. You're going to keep me, cause, but I make such a small difference. And back to our circle here, the idea of an infinitesimal, as our, as our triangles get even teeny, teeny, tiny, 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 the area cutoff gets even smaller. So here's another example. I'm going to cut off the limit there. One sec. Okay. So here you have your graph. And here you have, I don't know, some curve or whatever, some function, let's say. Well, what happens if I want to find the area under here? Well, there's no actual way to find the area under this weird shape. But there is a not-so-perfect way. Let's say I split up into rectangles. Then I go here, do the same thing. But see, I'm still missing a little bit. The smaller and smaller the rectangles get, the better. Let's say I give you some this curve right here. See, I'm still missing some. Now let's say I make my things a bit thin. Nice thin strips. Well, still missing, so. I'll make them even smaller. And even though you can't see it, because this marker is kind of thick, I'm still missing some pieces. The infinitesimal just says, get, make these things infinitely thin. Or as thin as, well, I can't really say, but uh, I can't exactly tell you how thin, because then, it, then the infinitesimal would have a value. Let's say I gave you like 0, 0, 0, a bunch of zeros, 0, 1. You can always put in another 0 and they would be smaller. So people get kind of uncomfortable with the idea of an infinitesimal. And the infinitesimal, well, so here the, they eventually replaced it with a limit. Now let's say, I want to teach you what a limit is now. So I'm going to write lim. Lim, let's say I give you some function. I'm going to say the, write, write it down here, f of uh, a. Let's say a is equal to a minus 1 over a minus 1. Well, I mean, this is pretty simple, right? Let's just call a minus 1 g, or sorry, b. b over b is always equal to 1, unless, of course, a is 1. Then it would be 1 minus 1 over 1 minus 1, or 0 over 0. And that's a very controversial topic. No one, there is no answer to this. I can't tell you the answer to this. Because I would be wrong every time I told you any random answer. It, it's There's no answer. Zero over zero. You can have zero over something. This, zero over x, let's say. Yeah, that exists. You can have an answer for that. That's just zero. Then there's also x over zero. Some people say, well, it's infinity. But I don't like that. It's, it's a lot of mathematicians don't like that either. So you, you can have zero divided by something. It's, it's zero. You can't divide something by zero, and you can't divide zero by zero. So we'll say, as a approaches zero of a minus one over a minus one. So, how, how are we going to figure this out? That's basically the answer, except, well, it's not really the answer. It's just saying, what is it approach? I'm going to pause the video and show you later. One sec. Okay, so, okay, so here's my... Graph. Now, if you watch the video, my video on uh, uh, my one of my first, the one that said that said uh, algebra how to graph functions, you know how to do this. So, zero, zero minus one that's negative one. One negative one divided by negative one. Well, that's one. So zero. When when x is zero, you get this here. So how about two? Two minus one that's one. So one over one that's one. So you get one right here. How about negative 1? Negative 1 minus 1, that's negative 2. So negative 2 over negative 2, it's negative 1 again. Oh, sorry, 1 again. Same thing with negative 2, a half, 1 and a half, this, and so one sec. So 
This is meant to be a straight line, but of course I don't have a straight line. Anyway, here you have a hole, just a gaping hole. And you can't, you can't do anything there. But look what happens. Like, let's say, as it gets extremely close to A equals 1, then the answer is 1. So we can write now here, the limit is 1. Because that's all it ever is. It can't be anything else. Anything At anything other than 1, the answer is always going to be 1. So, because see here, as it gets infinitely close, infinitesimally close, huh? The answer is still 1. And there. That's a limit, and that's an infinitesimal for you. And so probably in some of my other videos, so I just crossed two things off my calculus to-do to -do list. Why well, won't this thing cross off? I still got two more things. Derivative and integral. That's what an, that's what an integral is. Just, just so you know, um... Actually, screw that. I'll tell you in the next video. Leave me in suspense a little bit. Mm.